Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at the important web.xml file um, and we're going to need to know about this before we go on to looking at deploying web applications um, on the internet and on local machines. So um, let's start a new project in Eclipse here. Um, so now this is actually um, a quite recent version of Eclipse, at least at the moment. Um, this is Eclipse Juno. And I'm just going to go to File, New. And I'm going to go to Dynamic Web Project. And let's just call this um, Temp, because um, I'm not going to keep this. In fact, I've already got a project called Temp. Let's call it Temp1. That'll do. Um, and now if I go through this wizard screen here, uh, and now I'm going to click Generate Web.xml Deployment Descriptor. And if you're using an older version of Eclipse, or perhaps even a newer version, you might not have that checkbox. And if you don't have it, um, then Eclipse is going to create a Web.xml for you anyway, by default. So you don't have to worry about it. But if you do see that checkbox, then certainly tick it. And I'll click Finish here. Um, now. The funny thing is about recent versions of Eclipse is that if I now do new uh, servlet here, let's go to new servlet and just call this temp, let's call it test. Um, actually, that's the package. So I'll put this, I'll put it in a package called demo and I'll call it, I'll give it a class name of test. Now, if I create this servlet, um, so my servlet will be in here, in Java resources, in this source folder, in a demo package. And when you run this servlet, what happens is, um, let's say always use this server when running this project. And go forward and finish. Uh, what happens is there's going to be a URL that maps to that servlet. So here I am running the servlet, and the URL slash temp1 and um, we call this bit of the URL the context root, followed by slash and the server and the servlet name. In this case, is the URL by which I can access the servlet. Now, um, by default, in um, in this version of Eclipse, that URL is actually mapped in the Java source file itself. So if I click on this Java here, you can see there's this annotation that specifies what URL the servlet runs on. And there's a problem with this, which is that, um, at the moment at least, most application servers, as far as I know, will not take any notice of that. So um, we don't really want to use that mechanism, and I'm not going to use it in these tutorials. So um, what I suggest is the following. I'm going to delete this project for a start, and let's say delete project contents as well, because I don't want to keep this. And I'm going to create a new um, project here. Let's go to new. Um, dynamic web project, wherever that is. Here we go. And I'll call this, let's call it um, deployment. Deployment will do actually. Um, now, if you're using an older version of Eclipse, or if this has perhaps been changed in subsequent versions, then you're fine. But if you're using a version of Eclipse that looks like this, um, you see here it says dynamic web module version. And I'm going to change that to an older version. I'm going to go to 2.5 because uh, 2.5 uses a traditional web.xml file and it's the web.xml file that we're going to look at in this tutorial. So um, let's click next and everything else is fine. I'm going to make sure I tick generate web.xml deployment descriptor. And again, in older, older versions of Eclipse, you didn't have to do that because it was, it was the default. Um, and then I'll click finish. And, uh, and by the way, this is the context root, so that's the um, stem of the URL that it's going to run on. And I'll click Finish here. And um, now um, let's add a new servlet to this. So I'll right click and I'll go to New uh, Servlet here. And let's call this, let's put this servlet in a package called Demo. And I'll call it um, Hello, which will do. And I can accept the um, defaults here and just go through this wizard, and that's all fine. So I'm going to give it a um, do get method, click finish. 
and just just so that you can see that this is, that is actually doing something let's just um, say here yeah, print writer out equals new print writer we saw this in uh, an earlier tutorial a couple of tutorials ago and I'm um, oh, sorry not new print writer I actually need to do uh, response dot get writer there we go and now I'm going to use that writer just to write some output and in fact I won't even bother with normal HTML here I'll just say out dot write uh, print ln uh, hello because that will at least get us some visible output and now I'm going to run that and it's going to look uh, pretty much the same as last time let's just tick always use this server when running this project click finish so um, hello.java is going to run on this URL here's the context root just here and this of course is my domain, domain name which is going to change when I deploy this to the internet um, which I'm going to do um, uh, possibly in the next tutorial or the one after that and here's the, um, the servlet URL mapping now that URL mapping is controlled by a file which you can find under your web content folder in this webinf subfolder and it's this web.xml file and if I right click on that and go to open with text editor we can see what it actually looks like uh, when you view it as a text file and um, you can see that um, in older versions of Eclipse and in this version of Eclipse providing you do what I just did and you select the 2.5 uh, web module version when you add a servlet you automatically get this bit added to your web.xml so this bit here is, is actually controlling um, what files can act as welcome files so if I create an index.jsp for example then that's going to be like the home page for my um, project because index.jsp is in here in fact let's just do that now just to demonstrate if I go to new JSP file index.jsp click finish and just put um, hello hello from index.jsp and save that and just run it so I'll click on it here and it's very important that this should reside directly under your web content folder um, so don't accidentally put it in web in for anything and then run this we're going to see hello from index.jsp let's go back to web.xml now and um, so you see that for um, because this this is one of these files listed here um, if I run it then um, I can just actually go to the root of my web application here I can get rid of the index.jsp and just go to the context root here hit return and I'm still seeing that index.jsp file and that's because in web.xml it's listed as one of these possible welcome files um, now more importantly for our purposes here is the servlet mapping stuff um, because um, this controls uh, where your servlet, what URL your servlet is going to run on and if you look closely I've got a servlet um, here actually description and display name are not really important we could even get rid of those and it won't make any difference but what's important is that we should have a servlet tag so that opens there and closes here and a servlet mapping tag which opens there and closes here for every servlet um, and you can also add them for JSPs as we'll see in a minute um, now under the servlet tag here you need to give the servlet a name um, and that needs to match the name here I think um, and you also need to say in the, within the servlet tag you need to have a servlet hyphen class uh, which specifies the class to run for this servlet so the servlet's um, hello.java ultimately hello.class within the demo package so I call it um, demo.hello in the servlet class tag let's just take a look at that so there's my demo package with the hello.java in it and then to control the URL you have this servlet mapping and in there you have to specify the URL pattern and you can see here it's saying that the servlet called hello will map to the URL slash hello and if I change that for example to let's change it to hello world and let's run this again so save it and I need to select the file I want to run I'll run this hello.java and click run 
and now it's running on the URL slash hello world relative to the context route. Uh, now, um, if you um, do as I suggested and you either use an older version of Eclipse or you select that 2.5 module version, you won't have to worry about this web.xml. But um, you, you need to make sure that these mappings are here because if they're not here, then when you deploy your application to a, um, an app server of some kind, an application server, on the internet somewhere, um, it probably won't work unless you have this XML stuff correct. So it's important to at least check that and at least consider it and, and think about it. And the whole point of this web.xml really is to deploy your application in the correct way. Um, and this, so this is how you like map servlets. And if you have a um, JSP file um, and you want to map that to a URL, it's pretty simple. So let's just take a look at that. And um, I'll create under web content, I will create a new JSP file. And let's call it um, hello. Dot, in fact, I won't call it hello, I'll call it something different just for a change. Um, let's call it um, something like, I don't know, login.jsp. You can imagine that this is a login page and just go through this and that's all fine and um, now so if I run this by default um, it's gonna it's just gonna be blank I could put some text in here let's say this I could be a login page and just run it again so we can see that text there um, and if you sometimes I find that um, uh, yeah, if you find that your page doesn't display, try hitting the refresh button. And if it still doesn't work, um, go to project clean and then build it again. And clean will just clean out your old class files. But that seems to have worked. Let's just quit that. And uh, now let's take a look at web.xml. So there's not actually a mapping in there for my JSP file, but you can have one if you want. And uh, let's just copy this. So we need the same tags again, basically, except that. Um, instead of having, um, where, are we? where are we? So we've got a servlet hyphen class here under servlet. Yeah, so that's my old mapping. I don't want to change that. Um, and the servlet hyphen mapping bit is going to be the same, except I need to customize it, of course. Um, so let's call this, um, let's say that, let's call this login. So I'll type login for a name here. And um, part of the reason this is so similar to this is that servlets, JSPs get compiled to servlets as we saw in a previous tutorial. Um, but there's just going to be one that will change. So we'll give it the name login. And let's say that the URL pattern is going to be um, slash login page, for example. And um, now instead of servlet class, I need to say in here JSP hyphen file. So I'll say JSP hyphen file and close JSP hyphen file. And my file here is, um, start it with a slash, and then let's say index.jsp, I'm oh, sorry, login.jsp, which is the JSP file down here that I want to map. So everything apart from that is the same as the servlet mapping. Um, and let's save that. And now let's click, let's just select login.jsp and run that and see what we get. So I should be able to access that via the URL slash login page, um, as, I, as indeed I can. Um, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, you probably um, won't need to mess with this web.xml um, unless you want to customize your URLs. Um, but as I say, um, when you deploy your application, this is going to have to be there. So you just you need to check that Eclipse has generated it correctly. And if not, you're going to have to add add it in yourself and add in the mapping ma mappings that you want. So that's it for this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we're going to um, start looking at how to deploy this web application. And we're going to start by just deploying it to Tomcat on our local machine. And then we're going to look at deploying it to the internet using a free account. So join me again next time. And until next time, happy coding.